So with that, I'm going to hand it over to you, Frank. Are, are you good to go? Yeah, fine. Thank you. Yep. All right. So, the, so we do not have a technical checkup, so, but I hope everything uh, can hear me. Everyone can hear me. And um, yeah, let's go, I think. But I think, Nick, you are not in the Kite Museum, right? You are at home? I am at home this time. Yeah. Oh, so then the starting point of my world tour is wrong. <laughs> so okay. Um, it doesn't matter. So I will start with sharing my screen and hopefully it works. And let's see what happened. Because I only have the chance to have one um, screen here. And not the normal setup since one year with two big screens and all this stuff. So is it working that you are? It's starting. No. Yep, it looks good. We see your whole yeah. screen. Yep. Yeah, OK, fine. Then let's start a little tour with Google Earth because it starts. Um, it's all about, um, yeah, my personal Elfie Kite. And first, I will start with um, how came I to these ideas where all the things are inspired. And um, therefore, um, second one, sorry. Let's see. Oh, OK, I have to do that in that kind. So it's all about um, these mega vented kite. So also, if the camera is on and you see me, it's in the back. Um, so the idea for this presentation started with uh, the auction kites fighting cancer. So this kite raised more than 500 U uh, US dollars, and I'm very happy about that amount. So um, and um, I took a lot of pictures do during the uh, building process of this kite. And therefore, there was a chance to do a whole documentation of um, that process. And um, after these, more or less, we would go through these pictures and I explain a little bit. I will also have some kind of um, live presentation here. I had my sewing machine with me and uh, all the tools I need. And then we can uh, also have an insight on, on this practical part, um, how it, it's going on. So my flight around the world starts in front of the Kite Museum. Um, I've never been there, but uh, um, Google gave us the possibility to be there in front of and uh, start the tour with the helicopter that everyone also can see. Um, the, from my perspective, very, very nice location uh, close to the beach. And it's a huge one. So I have to be there uh, in the future. And uh, the next stop is on the other side of the United States. And I had the chance to be there uh, with uh, at the location of um, Kath and Elliot Schoch flying smart kites. So we, I was there sitting there on this uh, yellow cha um, uh, chair and uh, we have a very lovely day, um, uh, the chance to have a very lovely day to fly uh, very close to their uh, shop. Now we have, we'll go over the Atlantic Ocean that you have some uh, orientation where I live. So I, this is a scenery of Germany. And I live in the, at this point in uh, or the, these days in the southern part of Germany, like here in the middle. So that means water is far, far away. So I mainly have to do with uh, very slow winds, but um, I was born in Hamburg, so that's also the reason why we have to go there. Um, have to go to Hamburg, see a little bit more details from the harbor area. And um, there are a lot of folks that think, ah, Hamburg is very close to the uh, ocean, so Northern Sea or 
uh, Baltic Sea or something like that. So no, it's 150 kilometers far away from from the beach, but um, it has a lot of water around. So inside the town, you we have also a lot of water there. And let's see what came. It came to the place of inspiration. So this is very on the lower part. There's the airport, and we have a lot of water. We have a huge harbor area here on the top. And um, now it came to the one uh, building that inspires me uh, to the name, to all the kites I'm building, and so on. This is the famous uh, concert hall in in Hamburg. It, it's called Elbphilharmonie, and uh, it's a very long word. So Elbphilharmonie. That's the reason why the the guys in Hamburg says very shortly Elfi. So and this is one of the reason why it came. And when I start building uh, quadline kites, this kind of view uh, inspires me. All the ones who have ever flown um, quadline kite can imagine what what this shape could be. It's one of the two sides of um, of a quadline kite. So I took this picture, this satellite picture, and. Now I have to change the scenery here. Sorry. So um, so hopefully that works. So this satellite picture inspires me to find um, um, how I would start building or it's be inspired by kites. So I took this picture took also my iPad and draw the lines. So you see the orange lines, that's the classical one from one wing of a quadline kite. Then I took the red lines. They are uh, the lines from the roof. Then I added the yellow ones. And at the end, it looks like this. This was the main inspiration when I started 2016 with um, building my own kites. Um, quadline kites, and then I thought, okay, this could be funny, um, but hmm, for sure, it's not uh, that I would only build one kite and uh, only for light wind situations. Uh, I also thought about uh, how can I design that for as a mid vented kite or full vented kite. So I came up with these five different designs and the middle one is more you can use this white areas here for for mesh as um, as a mid vented and the right one here as a full vented so this was the first sketch uh, rough design and uh, it started with uh, in 2016 early 2017 when i built these five things after I had that, I thought about, is it possible to have a kite like this? To take also and draw the lines and only have the lines a little bit larger and uh, only a few elements. So that means all the white pieces inside a squat line kite should be empty. And therefore, first I have to think about how to do these rounded uh, shape curved um, elements and this is the main point from today also from the uh, practical exercise how can I build up these uh, curved lines that they are stable into the air um, that um, from my perspective every uh, shape or every style of shape is possible so and it's mainly about this so now we would like to go through the building process. I have prepared uh, some uh, pictures during the uh, building process um, on the way to these uh, cancer auction uh, kite. So everything starts with a template. I'm using a paper, classical one. It's uh, plotted on uh, two and a half meters long 
one meter wide. And um, I'm not sure if um, it's possible to enlarge that now. Um, so I need two of them. So one is always stable, it's flat. And the other thing looks like this. So template is all about um, it's necessary to cut that uh, because you need it for, uh, for the um, Icarex um, working on that. So this is how it came out of my uh, storage. And then you have to iron it to have it flat. Then I also marked it with numbers that I'm clear where it should be placed. And so let the left side and the right side very close to. And the next step is then to um, choose the colors. I, I always um, print uh, some kind of color template that I know, ah, these are the things. Uh, because my template is always without any additional uh, parts so that the overlay of uh, dark Icarex building on the lighter one, um, I have to be careful when I, uh, or I have to, um, yeah, be careful when I cut it, uh, cut these out and uh, use that. So the first thing is uh, lay out the fabric. And um, in this case, the fabric has to be doubled. So this is double layer of this um, gold color. And um, I have to go, is it possible to go more in detail? Yeah. Um, to go more in detail here. Ah, sorry. Fast. So, must be an e. Sorry. So, um, so I lay these two layers, and you see. I'm not sure if it's possible to see because um, I then uh, use some kind of uh, glue stick, so to fix the two layers um, close to each other, and then that they are not uh, able to move um, in in that sense. So, then hey, Frank. the next. Yeah. Uh, Steve Anderson just raised his hand. Uh, I don't know if it oh, popped sorry. up on your on your screen. Yeah, no, I closed the window with the chat. Sorry. No, no it's OK. It's, it's, I only... it's... <laughs> sorry, it was by accident. I was meaning to open the chat. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no problem. Fine. That was a good time for us to test the, the function. So go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and, and thanks, Nick, Nick, to observe that because I only see what you are seeing. So you see the whole screen. Uh, and I only have this one. And um, yeah, OK, fine. So that means I have to um, have these double layered Icarix and then I have to fix it. And I fix it with with a glue stick um, around the template. And uh, this is the final state when I also fix the template on the top. So that means on the top is the template fixed. Then I have the two layer uh, Icarix and the, these um, are building or these are not able to uh, move or something like that during the sewing process. So this is then the, the process when I start sewing. And you can see, hopefully, there is one line that I follow with a straight stitch um, as good as possible. All these curves and these narrow um, edges and, and everything is, from my perspective, is possible. If you go slow and uh, carefully, um, every um, shape is possible to, to, to build. Um, so here is another uh, photo that you see. It's uh, the normal one. I use the 2.5 millimeter distance be between. Uh, so and carefully you go along this way. And here on the right, it's in the middle of the process. So this is the same for a different color. This is the larger piece. Um, and it has very 
different kind of um, lines here and everything also these little peaks here on on the right and on the on the lower uh, right corner is it's always possible you can build up this at the end of the process so here's another picture where you can see ah i stitched along with the machine uh, along the template and it's not so necessary from my experience that you have to uh, also fix the paper on the ecalyx with some kind of glue stick um, it's okay to use uh, tape with 10 to 15 centimeters difference between that so these are more the smaller parts and you see also i try my best uh, to curve around um, these templates um, and you see also it's only necessary to fix it on one two three four or five points so it's not so hard these things are fixed as for example at uh, only three points um, around this shape and yeah you have to also think about it has to be some uh, more space or more place on the starting and end point so these are more for the straight parts here um, it's much easier much faster only take it and then do it um, these things are also uh, fixed is double layered uh, fixed with a glue stick and at the end it looks like this here so all the parts are now uh, stitched and the first um, step of stitch stitching is now over then uh, the cutting process starts or the cutting process step starts and um, the recommendation here is you have to be at the outside as small as possible um, mainly in this very critical areas like this one here or if you have a very uh, small curve or something like that you have to be um, very close to the stitch with with the cutting and um, yeah cutting i'm uh, always cut with uh, with a knife so it's more the cold cut process i'm not using the uh, heated uh, some heated things um, and then mainly the parts are ready so here you can see and this is around one and a half two millimeters distance it's possible to have that um, so the recommendation is be as close as possible um, to the uh, thing so then for me i have to have the first impression uh, how it looks like how it looks like by color um, and so on that's the reason why i lay out all the parts uh, down on this uh, template on the floor and um, here's more detail on the left and more detail on the right side then um, the next part is coming you have to take all these elements and you have now to turn it from the inside to the outside so i think this is much better if we see that that afterwards live how it's going on when when i uh, do the sewing and bring the th the stuff from the um, inside to the to the outside that means the seam has now uh, to pressed um, inside and at the edge of these elements there is at the end a four layer ecorex so that the seam is now inside and uh, it's then um, have the final um, shape so now all parts are ready also the smaller ones um, it's a little bit tricky but also we can see how how we can do that these smaller parts bring that from from the uh, inside to the outside so turn it around and um, yeah here's only more detailed perspective so this only shows ah, okay 
Yeah, and now um, I also would like to have some kind of um, colored impression. And on the other hand, I ironed all the parts because um, then they are very, very flat. So you use more than hand warm iron, iron, uh, an iron and you heat it that up and then it's, it's perfectly flat uh, and very well prepared um, to start the second um, uh, sewing process. So here is an example of these small parts and now you see um, the um, seam is inside and will be pressed down by this second um, thing. And you also have now this classical uh, view or the cl classical uh, stitch here with three times on the right, three times on the left. So classical one. This holds uh, also the um, fabric down. So, ah, yeah, okay. I have a little movie here, um, how to collect and bring all the things. I'm not sure if the bandwidth is fast enough yet that you can follow that. It's not too long. Bring all the things. And uh, this is my first kite I ever made. So it's here in, in the background of myself. Uh, you saw it a little bit. So that's the reason why it has, it has a different coloring but uh, it's the same and um, with this it was also a little different in the pro in sewing process of the different parts so with this older one with the first version i stitched every uh, part in with this um, zigzag stick uh, stitch um, up front and then I took a second one to bring all the pieces together and uh, yeah we also may have a final uh, look on that it looks here and there a little bit more horrible um, so now it's much better to only uh, stitch the small darker um, the small parts prepare them um, and then um, fix the larger parts, so that means the the yellow, the orange, and also the 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 gold one here on the template, um, and then you can lay the prepared um, blue elements here uh, in the right position and fix this together with double uh, double sided um, tape. So now these parts here on the left i think uh, mainly are fixed uh, together so and this will be going on more and more of these parts are now fixed so that means also um, you now see the back side of the kite um, uh, during the uh, process and here you can see also yeah now all the parts are fixed and Yes, if it's going to the final sewing process, um, it looks like a little mess. And you see, uh, okay, the blue ones are always uh, stitched also with the white uh, yarn here. And uh, now it's up to be a little careful and start the sewing process with uh, the yellow, the gold and the orange part that on the one hand, you have final, finally also this uh, white yarn stitch um, and also you have uh, fixed with that these two um, or all the elements together that uh, they can go up into the air. So you see, okay, here these blue ones are fixed together with these orange one on here. I'm in the middle of the process um, of uh, stitching. Um, to fix the parts. So there's only one um, thing and it looks much, much better. So as I said, we can take the camera um, afterwards uh, during the live presentation. So here's another um, impression on how it looks like. What you can see here very well, I think, is that this is the area of two layer Icarex and here it's much more the um, orange color yeah this is why 
uh, because they are uh, these are four layered and there's only a small um, seam here on that part. So when the inner part is um, uh, sawn, then I have to fix the upper parts to bring the uh, leading edge together with the thing and the frame elements also, they will, um, they have a different kind of process. I'm not sure if, if this is possible, possible to see on that thing here. Yeah, okay. So um, I'm. these are not stitched because they are also double layered, but um, only folded on one side. So they are open on, on the one side. So that's the possibility to, to bring it from, from the left side here uh, to, to the right and bring it over all the ends. So all the ends of, of the colored part, the yellow, the or orange and gold are now closed and they are inside this blue ones. And then you can start with um, stitching around. So here it's then on the uh, front side and on the back side is this blue um, part here. So, and then, yeah, kite is ready, um, ready-made. Um, this is also the classical way I present all, all the pictures and the kites. And uh, we see here more the left side detail and the right side detail. So that means at the end, I uh, will hopefully only have one or two um, start and stop points. So I start, I'm starting on the, the stitching here around on, on the top right uh, corner, go here to the bottom in the middle and then on the left and on the uh, top left and stop there and um, to, to stitch and then everything is uh, together. And then there's only one stitch from the left to the right um, in the leading edge. So now we have here more little details how it works. At the end, you have to finally cut it from, cut these blue elements from the backside. That is, uh, it looks very nice here in that area. We will see it more in detail. Um, you have to do a roundup and so, so that means this blue part here is fixed on the top inside the double layered darkron. Also here, um, up front pressed with uh, or fixed with double layered, um, double sided um, tape. Also here inside, it's fixed on one side with double sided tape. Um, and then and you can uh, start the stitching process. Okay, also here I have, I did a small video presentation that uh, everyone can see how it looks like from the very narrow angle. And you also see uh, the parts, they are rounded here, rounded there. Everything is possible, also these uh, very, these corners, everything can be built up here. So, and some uh, impressions also. Um, yeah, there are two or two or three parts that these um, blue lines are crossing. So, and therefore, um, I'm using a blue yarn and um, hopefully you can see that there will be a picture, I'm not sure, to see that cross. On the other hand, we will see it. So now here you can use the scissors from the back and you can cut it along uh, the curve, for example, that it looks very nice and it's, it goes along with uh, the stitch here. Also at the leading edge, this is, um, is the Icarex is one piece and then I only have a double piece that it looks better. And I 
uh, melted the the holes inside so and i'm also i started with uh, having two holes on on the side so more in in this area here and but until now during um, experience and so i only um, have or i have decided to have only one hole at the end uh, also for for all the kites um, all, also the other ones if i had a standard full sail um, uh, kite or so i'm only only at this point in time using this uh, style to have only one hole here and hold the uh, rods of the leading edge so here the classical one two holes um, on the back side there is a knot here and a knot on the left and on the right so that uh, it's fixed in the the middle so So, yeah, and this is also a very special presentation. I thought about, okay, when it's dark outside, you can have a light on and um, have a very special one. And now we will go through the first presentation outside. So Phil asked me uh, also to send some pictures from uh, from the field and I said okay this is not not the normal one because I would like to send if customer came or someone asked me to build a kite for for them um, I will bring them brand new out of the working area but will ask me to have the one or other picture also outside on the field that's the reason I I took it and here is the presentation so it's the um, the auction kite here on the left, the first one I ever built in that style. And um, until now, there are also the possibility to have a smaller one. So this is like a Ref 1.2. Uh, it's a little bit larger than the normal 1.5 size. Um, and this is the classical Ref uh, 2 size with 1.8 meters um, in the leading edge, and they have the classical 1.4, uh, 2.4 meters in the leading edge. So that means at the end, yeah, you can fly it also, um, you have may have it um, in the smaller one. That means also these uh, stripes are smaller and it's a little bit harder to turn them from the inner side to the outside. But um, yeah, it's also uh, possible then. And yes, it was a windy day. You can see the snow is, uh, it's similar to when it's very windy and you have that on the beach. Um, so there was a lucky day that we can go out into the field and have that also um, some kind of first uh, flying experience. So I'm using, you saw it also the classical bridle. So I am uh, do not experiment. I had some exper experimentation with, with other ones, but at the end, um, I uh, stay on the classical one. Um, it's fine for me. So you can also see something, some impression into the air, what is possible to do with that kite if the wind is strong enough. Hey, Frank, you have a question from Mitch of, is the outer layer the yeah. same doubled Icarax? Uh, sorry, yes, the outer, uh, the outer uh, is also doubled layer, double layer. 
so that means uh, let's go for yes this is i understood that right this is the the outer one and this is also double layered um but it's only fold at at one side so you have like this here two centimeters is the is it wide and you fold it in you make a stripe of four then you fold it into the middle that it's possible to uh, have the ecorex on this side um, hold the the duck on here and also you you see it from the back side i think it's much better to see that uh, live here when i start the camera and we have a look on on the on the real kite and to try uh, to find the right picture yeah and uh, this is when the presentation is in more sunny and green environment um, so this was a different uh, 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 day with also you see there's another one with uh, coloring black and yellow so and this is the smaller one there are also um, uh, pictures available but i think it's much better to have a direct view with the camera on on this kite so the one with the auction is gone but we can have a look on on this different coloring and uh, colored kite and um, see more details asking questions and go for some kind of demonstration here so this was more my theoretical part hope to find uh, Got at the end. Yeah, stop the screen sharing and hope to get to the camera. I have to start this one moment. So. My friend Larry bought that kite. <clears throat> yep, I was going to say it looks like Larry uh, got that kite from the auction. He's holding yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they sold everything on. Uh, kites for cancer this last month they raised like forty-two thousand dollars wow. all the kites were you know anywhere from seven to two thousand dollars a piece it was ridiculous larry would you say something so open your mic and then right. hopefully it works I'm just gonna put it over there. try again what was the question no, I only said uh, if you would like to say something, you you have to open your mic because it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah, we're not we're not willing to risk it in our trees. Hardly <laughs> 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 had much wind this month. Yeah, one day it was gusty. The very beginning of March. So anyway, thank you, Frank. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, okay. you're welcome. Ocean City, here we come. Yeah, <laughs> and this is the this is what I what I have in in um, in mind if it's possible under these uh, specific uh, conditions to be back in the US then um, for sure I will be back in Ocean City so I was there during my tour in 2019 as I also visited uh, Kath and Elliot and um, I always have that on the on my my list so if it's possible and there's a kite festival, I will be there, yeah. What, so. When does it take to lift that kite? It looks, uh, you know, ultimately vented. So does it take a very high wind to fly it? Yeah, it starts with uh, four before to have fun. So it could be lower, but fun starts at four and uh, it's tested at the Netherlands beach up to eight before. So that means round about uh, 60 to 70 kilometers per hour wind speed. So, and the last time I uh, uh, tried it, it was round about 40 kilometers per hour with uh, gusts up to 70 80 so it was windy yes but for me as a uh, northern guy uh, for for the area here in the southern part of uh, germany it was very very hard and they said wow what happens and i was out 
outside there and, and I had two or two and a half hours very, very much uh, fun uh, at the outside. So I would start or Anna, stop. So hopefully it works that I can restart or change the camera, then we can go for how to do it here in that tool, always different tools. So is the camera on? No, at this time it's It looks like it's thinking, Frank. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's thinking, I know. Um, Yeah, meet up with Anson so, today or this weekend. Tomorrow. So at this point in time, the camera is not recognized. Ah, so let's see how to fix that. If you click on the three little buttons on the lower right hand yeah, side, yeah, I, the... I have I have changed it, but the the camera is not connecting to the um, to, to the Mac, so this is the problem. Ah, problem okay. Is, this problem is not on. I I know how to change it, so now I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I have to connect the or restart the app on the iPhone because I'm using the iPhone at, at this as the second um, camera. And if this is not working, then it will be hard because I can show this around and let's see if it will be connected. No, it doesn't work. Okay. If it's any help, Frank, when I was experimenting, you can use your phone to sign on separately so that you actually have two um, connections going on, one through your ah, phone, okay. one through your computer. So, so um, you mean when I start the Google Meet again a second time on the iPhone, yes. it mm -hmm. could work? Yes. Yep, okay. I would just suggest you turn off the camera on your computer so that mm -hmm. it doesn't eat up all the bandwidth at your house. Yeah, okay. So then first, me. You might also, you might also not do what I just did, which is to say have both your microphones and your speakers on <laughs> when you're in uh, two, two uh, sign-ons. Yeah, the good news is I'm using the, the earphone and uh, for things and I have to download the Google Meet on, on the iPhone. It's now working. Ah, I tried it before and it worked very well. So open the Meet. Yep. 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 So, yes. so, fertig mit einem Code. Now I have to copy the code. STP minus So All right, we see the second you, Frank. Sorry. All right, we see the second you. There we go. All right, uh, but your mic is off on that one. So let's make. Now, can you hear me? 
Yep. Now we can hear you. Okay. Okay. So then I will stop the microphone here. Ah, yeah. It stopped on the phone. Camera is. I'm not sure. Is it working? No. Oh, it was. Now it's off. There we yeah, go. Yeah, it was. Now here we go. Now it's on. Okay. I can turn around All right, the camera. And yeah. Wow. Uh, for uh, everyone else, uh, if you put your cursor over uh, the one that Frank is using to look at various kites and stuff, there should be a, a pin option and you can pin him to the front screen. I'm going to do it and it should show up for everyone else, but if it doesn't uh, pin him to the top screen, that's how you you can pin him. <laughs> and I also have to pin me a second time that I can all see my, myself, right? How can I do that? I only see nine people here and on the laptop. Poor. Let's see. Ah, yeah. There's more possible. Ah, uh -huh. the uh, icon uh, picture, not actually a live picture. So now I see myself on the laptop. I see the camera picture here. Okay. Hey, Frank, hold on for just one second. Mm -hmm. uh, so the one we want to select is the one that you can actually see, Frank not his icon and click or hover your mouse over uh, his his screen and click pin just in case me pinning doesn't work for all of you Do you not see uh, Frank's other? You can also go into. Hold on for one second. Let me. Mm. Let me show folks how to do this. Uh, I'm gonna present my screen so everyone can see it. Let me select this screen. Oh, okay. All right, so just a second. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I know everyone's on mute, so. <laughs> All right, so there's two ways we can do this. We can, let's see if I can find Frank again. All right, I can find the one of Frank with his actual image and click pin and pin that to the screen. If you don't have Frank showing up, what you can do is you can come over here to this list of people. And then we find, find Frank wherever he's hiding. And It'll you be can the pin. One. Yep, you want the muted Frank pinned to the screen. I know it's how, it seems a little weird, but you want the muted one pinned to the screen. All right, so I'm going to stop presenting. Come on. And stop sharing. There we go. So now you can hear me, right? We can hear you, and we see the side of your face. <laughs> There's someone who stopped my microphone. So, because the audio is coming via the um, laptop, and the picture is coming then from the second thing from the uh, camera. OK, then. Let's see, there it was a question in the chat, and uh, we'll answer this first. This was, could you show it from the backside? Yes. 
So I can take the thing here. Oops. One moment. So now I'm back. Yep. Okay. So now the question was, how does it look like here at the at the back side? So and you can see here, hopefully, it's possible to see. Yeah. All we're all we're seeing on Frank's screen or uh, feed is his face, his his icon picture, not his. Not his, uh, whatever his camera is seeing. There's two that say Frank. Look for the one that's showing the close up of the. There's two uh -huh. that say Frank. Okay, we need to find the other one then. Yeah, you pin the second one. So you find the second one in the list and pin it using uh, the three. People may be having problem with the change layout as well. If you've gone to a spotlight, you're going to be spotlighted on who's talking as opposed to the screen. So you may need to change your layout to auto or tile. Done from the three little dots on the lower right. The change layout. It's on auto. OK. Um, should I go on? I think Where'd yes, you get? Huh? Yes. We need to find this. Yeah. Okay. Do you make your own okay. bridles? Sorry, that was while we were waiting. I was yeah, yeah. So the, the the first thing um, there was a question how it looked like here at uh, from the back side, and uh, as you hopefully can see here very close, um, it's a double sided. You correct? So that means um, it's it's like my it's like my fingers, yeah. So double sided, and it goes here one on the back side and one here on the front um, i bring it here together that means this uh, red one is inside the ecorex i'm not sure if this is possible to see so it goes here totally well so does that mean there at you... that point there are six layers of ecorex um at that point there are six up to six um only at at the uh Joint. left and all the, at, at the at the end here so here there are two layers of the red there are two layers of the uh, darker ones and you see it within the light i hopefully okay. yeah so you it. don't yeah yes. it, it goes straight inside the thing and that means the with this one here the end is open but with with these ones the the end is closed inside this uh, part here so and this is how it looks like when at the cross i took a different color of the uh, yarn and make it here into in the middle um to fix this cross of these two parts so i think these were, were the most important things also here at the top let's see how it works yep and you can see the different color uh, for here at that point in time, uh, at that point here, to fix it and that it looks uh, fine at the end to fix these parts. So from the experience, I also um, observed that it's not, um, it, it's hard if the parts are too long, then they start vibrating a lot um, in the air. 
So. Ah, die Kamera aus. Moment. One moment. Sorry for that. Ah. So. Jetzt kann man noch weg. Ja, okay. So, then I will go here for... So, and to... I've prepared something, or a little bit better to say, um, two layer of uh, Ikarex. So that means this is the one layer white, and this is the second layer white. We bring these two things together and uh, fix them at the inside with a glue stick. So I make only a small curve here, and then They can be fixed on that. So they are now pressed together. And then we can say, okay, we would like to have this kind of rounded shape. For example, is it visible? No, a little bit. So. And that means I can now take, hopefully you can see it. So this is the rounded shape we would like to have at, at the end. Okay. Means I have to go to prepare that a little bit here on my machine that we can do it very Practically. So. So. so I follow these uh, parts here. So I'm hopefully yes. There we go. Okay. So now we have this rounded part. Yeah, it's a double layered Icarex with a classical stitch. I'll change the camera that you can see it better. So. Okay. Yep. So I take, as I said, I take an classical knife and then I have to cut this very close at the outside. And the curved element. So now we have this curved part here and also as I explained it before, there's a very small um, seam here. And now you have to bring it from the inside to the outside. So that means we have to take this and Oh, 
take my tool, bring it here into the shard is a little complicated, but it works. You see, oh, one more here. You see, so, and now it's turning from the inside to the outside, so that it's at the end ready to go. So now it's turned around and I'm not sure. So, and then you have to go with, I, I'm using this little tool here also to um, to expand the the stitching area here as much as possible to make it as flat as possible and um, so. so from so So now let's go a little bit closer. Oh, sorry. Camera's back. Yep. Go a little bit closer. And uh, you can see the more lighter areas inside here and there. And now it's have this classical curved stuff. So then you can use a little iron. It's, it's at this point in time, it's not, not warmed. Um, and you can uh, iron it a little bit, then it will be very, very fine and flat. So, and then we can go back to the sewing machine and do the second change that for 1.6 and do the second part of stitching. So I will not doing this too much and too long, but now it's as it should be at the end. Is that visible? Looks good from here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. It's only because I, I, I see that it's, it's only that you can see enough, but um, 
now it's finally as it was here with the also ich bin hier ganz unabhängig with the kite so like this final result here this looks now very similar sorry so bring this to the right one so and with that kind of uh, working style um, it's possible to do these rounded shaped elements and uh, bring these together and so on and they are also in the air um, it looks very fine and they are uh, strong enough mm -hmm. that nothing will happen also uh, during strong mm -hmm. wind and so on based on these uh, double uh, layered icarex i think it's also strong enough for a uh, higher wind range okay so then i will go back here and bring that myself in on the screen back that we from my perspective now can have more a question and answer session because um, i think this uh, is the final result that i said okay it's possible to do that with these curved style um, elements So now I think it's we should open for our mics for question and answers or are there some comments? Fr Frank, yes, Frank, the, the can we there's see some question about the yeah the the reversing tool. What was the head the end of the tool like? Uh, you mean this one here? <laughs> yeah yeah this this is more like um a, it's not a, a driller it's it's ah. more little little rounded here it's not sharp enough i think yeah okay let's see if it works yeah no okay. sorry get what it is yes. it's a rounded yeah. imbus it's a hexagon drive with yeah. a bolt. yeah yeah hexagon like this drive. rounded imbus or something yeah. like that so it's not it's not sharp yeah um, it's more uh, rounded it's also possible if if you use something that it's more rounded so i found that and uh, used it if if you use another tool for uh, making that but then you have to bend this uh Icarex part here over over this this yeah. uh, tool that you stretch this a little bit and uh, also the layers the four layers have to lay them uh, very flat so it it works at the end and uh, yes if you iron this icarex a little bit more then it also looks very nice it looks uh, close to be new and very similar to to this new one parts here Then there was something about the template, right? That, that was my that was my question. I, I saw that you left the temp, you taped the template onto the Icarex with yeah, the, and then you sewed just off one side of the template. Yeah, so right. Is the template just heavy paper, and how long does it? It's it, it's just heavy paper. The more than the, I think it's one hundred gram or something like that so it's not so heavy it's not 200 or something like that um it's classical 100 uh, it's similar to what you have uh, in paper when you are using it in a copy machine and this gives me only the orientation where i have to 
so and uh, yes the pictures show that um, I, I try to be as close as possible and um, that I also can reuse the template for a second or a third kite. I think there was a question about which CAD software or which software we're using to create the drawings. Um, the, the, the pictures you saw, the first ideas, I'm using PowerPoint. But I mean for this printing is, the yeah, printing yeah. For, the template. For creating, I, I'm using these, um, let's see, this is a free version to be clear. It's LibreCut. Oh, LibreCut. So okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm using that. Should I? Will you be giving a class on that later? Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm I'm using this because I'm. I'm uh, clear at the end, uh, it's for free. It's um, at the end, you have to be a little bit careful when you um, would like to have a PDF file uh, to send this to the to the one who did the these copy stuff. So there's an internet um, so a website where I stored my files and then it took two two days or so then the thing is coming back and um, yeah I can but I only using very limited basic functions within uh, LibreCAD so it's also no only for the drawing the ideas and all my coloring templates and so on it's all done with PowerPoint so because this is a day-to-day -to -day tool and it's easy to use and yeah so I'll, I'll, I'll make a plug. You can ask Lindsey Johnson tomorrow with the 8.30, class, 8.30 Pacific time class. He's uh, good at that stuff. Okay. There were, there were a couple other questions you didn't get to in the chat. I'll just read them to you. One was, why do you use two layers of material? Why, why, why what? Why are you using two layers of Icarix? Ah, two layers. Um... At the beginning, I heard if I'm I'm a cold cutter with only the cutting uh, using the cutting knife, and uh, there are a lot of people that said, "Hmm, during the strong wind, um, th this uh, will not hold," and uh, all these things. And and um, therefore, I started to think about that, and I also also asked my mother. She was. Um, she is now um, 85 and uh, so an old lady but she has learned how to do that and I ask her um, I, I ask her hey how can I do this kind of things and she, she said yeah it's very simple you have to do it like this and uh, we, we did it very practically so like uh, we, we, I did it here and she she showed me that, and I said, okay, fine. Then it's clear it's there's no open um, uh, Icarex there. And uh, I also thought at the beginning these double layered it's much is much more strong uh, than anything else. And the the outside here is then also very clear, and uh, there can't happen to anything with that. Yeah. So I haven't tried it with uh, with a one layer before. With a one layer you'd have to hammer hot cut or or edge yeah. bind. So yeah. so this gets rid yeah. of all the edge binding and the hot and or hamming. Yeah. So that's and the reason a, why and it's a very clean look. It just adds weight to the kite, but it doesn't matter in eight bow board. <laughs> it doesn't matter because if you have nothing else than only these kind of stripes here, then how about the weight? <laughs> right. <laughs> and also uh, regarding the wind. So my experience on, I, I did another one um, with a lot of holes inside and I'm using the mesh and this was 
a very heavy and very slow kite. So if you're using a lot of mesh, then from my experience, the kite speed is slowing down and, and this is not fun. These things are fun and they are, uh, they are, um, have a good speed uh, during, and you can control it very well um, during um, high wind or in a high wind range. Hey, sure. Frank. Yeah. Uh, real quick, um, I just want to put this out there. Uh, if you can go ahead and close your iPhone recording so that it'll jump back to your normal computer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that way it goes back to uh, recording that as the, the main one. Um, and I'm going to jump out of here. I need to uh, get the next session started. And uh, this one will continue recording until the last person leaves. So you guys can feel free to hang out here. But uh, Andrew Beatty's session on tangling and untangling your lines starts in about 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, I'll post the link to that here in the chat, but uh, right before I leave. So here we go. And, and people may have to unpin. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now I'm back on the on the Mac, so I have only the one camera. There we go. Perfect. And that'll that'll now yeah, highlight much, back to you. <laughs> All right. Better. So I just posted the session code for Andrew Beatty's in about fifty now ten minutes. Sorry, uh, for yeah. how to tangle and untangle your lines. So I'm gonna hop out of here. You guys can continue to hang out in here. It'll keep recording until the last person leaves. So, bye everybody. Okay, fine. Bye. Thanks, Nick. I had a question about uh, the bridle. I noticed uh, you said you use a classical bridle. Are you are yeah. you making them yourself? Do you have a? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I noticed you had a so, red one. Where do you get the red bridle line? <laughs> yeah, there the, there are possibilities. So I have a, an internet dealer uh, in Germany here. It's drachenmarkt.de, and uh, they have lines in light yellow. So really, hmm, it's all bright yellow, I'm not sure. Then uh, orange, they have these red ones. They have classical black. So there are different things. And this is one of my, <laughs> like, like to say, one of my sports, um, because I'm collecting all these things to have different colors, uh, color opportunities. Um, so, but they offer it for red, yellow, I think orange, I'll and the classical to... bridle. So, yeah. and um, the bridal making starts with uh, my first quadline kites are um, these um, polo kites. They are made from. Um, and I on, only took this, I took the measurement and I saw, okay, how long is it? And, um, and the last ones I started building based on the idea how to do that uh, on the Wierflieger. He's the one who make these uh, high wind uh, dali dali kites. So there are a lot of, experience ongoing but yes i'm doing my bridal myself so it doesn't make sense to um to buy them somewhere else or so ready to use because i'm also using uh, a different size so if i go for revolution then they are using the the spars or the rods with 90 uh, with uh, 79 centimeters and um, i'm using the rods or spars with uh, three and a half centimeter longer because they are also available when I'm buying these Sky Shark stuff. Then they had 82.5 uh, centimeters, and I asked myself, why should I cut them? So I'm using a, diff a little different format, and therefore it's necessary also to adapt the bri bridle to that. Ah, uh, yeah. So. I've been making them and cutting the spars and mm -hmm. just to make it standard size. 
Yeah, to to make it standard size, and I I said, okay, why is it why necessary? why they are, yeah, why yeah <laughs> yeah they so, they are a little they are a little, little larger. Um, there's no not so much difference in that, and uh, yes, it could be seen as it's a little special from what I I'm doing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody's asking a question in the chat about uh, carbon spar. Which spars do you use for the high vented kite? Um, I'm always using in low or medium or high wind. I'm using the Sky Shark, and I'm using using the Sky Shark PX2 or the PX4. They are much. They are stronger. At this point in time, um, or during these days, I'm also have uh, starting the one or other experience with um, with others coming from, uh, although not uh, the Sky Shark, but I've never used really for my kites the original um, Revolution ones, but um because. Revolutions, if I start buying them, they are very expensive and it's hard to get them uh, and you have to pay extra uh, uh, customs fee and, and all these things if they are coming from the US. And therefore, I take this, what is available and where we have also a, as a local group here, a good experience with. Yeah. Um... I know I'm asking a lot of questions. <laughs> Sorry. That's the um, reason why we're here together, or this is a yeah. question and answer se session to, to uh, and I, yeah. I'm fine. So you, you went and sat with Kath and Elliot to, to learn mm -hmm. their techniques, um, partially, I think, and to fly with them. The, the leading edge, that leading edge has no venting, right? It's just a simple leading edge. Uh, yeah, you just fold. I'm guessing you fold over to reinforce the end and cut it, yeah. and you're done, right. Right? right? So or sew it, and you're done. So, um, do you have any? Do you have pictures of the assembly of a standard leading edge with the reinforcement mm -hmm. corner? I, I've made yeah. them. I just find it. I'm not very good at it yet. <laughs> so <laughs> it's tricky to get it to the exact length and for the sale, or at least I found it to be a little tricky. I had to, I made a couple about a yeah. centimeter too long, not too long ago. <laughs> okay. So I fixed it. I cut there's them. The, but <laughs> there's, a, the, but there is a possibility to, to um, be independent on the length du during the assembly process. I'm not the sure thing, at all of it. Yeah. Um, so if you said your leading edge is one time, it's a little bit too long or it's too short or whatever. Um, if I am have the sail without the leading edge ready, then I um, assemble these two things together. And there is a possibility at both end sides um, to cut after you fix the sail with the dark on leading edge with double layered um, tape. Then you can cut and correct the length. And um, then you said, mm, then we have an open end. Yeah, I'm mainly with, with um, Let's see. Oh, Kath yeah. is chiming in on the chat. <laughs> Kath, I want, I need to come watch Elliot make it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I need to see it, the process. <laughs> but um, you're talking about the, the this end, or I'm talking about this end here. Yes, with the reinforcement. And um, I'm doing it that this is a long part of the Icarex. I yep. fix it together with the with the sail, yep. and then I have here these these parts of the end. So that means if it's fixed, then you can cut it that it's 
perfectly fit to the sale and then you use another second par, uh, piece of ikerex that is double layered here um, that you bring from the side that it's rounded up and you have a very good end so and this is the style how i do that um ah so you to, put a you put you fold over a piece of yeah i fold over Akron, another a, a smaller you, one a dark from this only this length here and and this um gives and it's it's, it's folded then to the inside uh, that uh, you do not have these open cut area here like the old revolution ones they were cut it here and uh, after years it's it's uh, right, going right. off so so yeah, you right. so what you do is you sew not all the way to the end you don't sew quite yeah. all the way to the end you cut it exactly to the end of the sail you right. fold over a piece of dacron in the yes. and, and at an angle and then fit yeah. it inside fit it inside and outside yep. and then yeah. sew that last bit on yeah and okay then all yes fixed with, it's and all it's fixed reinforced with, yeah double-sided tape as well yeah right it's fixed with double-sided tape and then you can start with your uh sewing process so that you can have it at once everything layered um and then it goes well, it's you, very similar to to the to the part here where the possible to see yeah, yeah you're here. talking about the yeah, where, where the, this is also this double layered stuff and it's also fixed and then you have only a one once in a lifetime sewing to fix all the all the layers um together at same once. same approach for the uh with the venting for or do you yeah, just not vent same. You just, um, or you vent through Dacron instead of using screen mesh. Um, I'm not sure if I get it right. For the for mean? the for the standard sale. Yeah, for the standard sale. You have the mesh, or you use not wide. The, no, I I used it at the beginning. Um yes and this was the same that i bring the um the darkron yeah and the mesh and bring these things together that the mesh is inside and fix that with a double uh, sided tape and the, you uh, zig, saw zig, then zig, yeah. and br bring the things together um during these days when i saw the um leading edge with the holes also um elliot is using now yep um i changed this for all the kites um because then i um for me it's much easier to say okay uh let's fold it once not the same length bring right. it a little bit more length of of the uh, dark run uh, the one one layer dark run here where do you you cut the holes afterwards um, so that means you you can prepare the leading edge um, before you bring it together with with the Icarex sail. How wide is? And the I'm also under? not the one. I'm also not the one who is um, folding the um, the mesh with the Icarex together. So I only bring that flat together and have once process there and um, that's it yeah elliot has a, a fairly i think his joint to the to the shook kites he he uses uh uh a double hem double hem <laughs> uh strip <laughs> to attach yeah. the the leading edge to the sail but is the, is your lead, Frank? Is your leading edge, except for the areas where it is reinforced, is your whole leading edge just double Icarex, double layer Icarex, or is the entire no double layer Dacron, or it's oh. it's a Dacron? Dacron. So, so it's it's three inches wide. It's three inches yeah. wide, I think. Um, it's three inches at the beginning, yes, and then three inches, and you fold 
one, one inch, inch one double. Inch, yeah. One inch double. So that means you have you have uh, on the let's say on the back side you have one inch. Then you have here on or one part is one inch and the other part is two inches long. Yeah, roundabout. Great, thank you. And in this in this uh, longer area is in this one layer um, darkron you um, and um, bringing the holes inside. So it's very similar for what uh, Elliot did. Elliot did also um, some um, Icarex along the stitch, uh, the, the stitch along the um, leading edge. It's, it's a little bit more um, complicated, but on the other hand, it's, I'm not sure how this is folded. I only have the final result from Elliot here in my bed. So yeah, I've I've made one using Elliot's technique. It's 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 uh I mean the 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 original uh way of joining the sail to the leading edge. Yeah. It's folded, yeah. folded, 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 folded. <laughs> Yeah. So <laughs> no, no. The, I I I think the, it the it looks a little bit different because, um, for me it it's it's not folded. But I I haven't seen him working and and doing it. I only uh, was there for for this one day and uh, we talked about and um, we uh, I saw only the final result and said, um, Elliot, it's very very fine to have two of your kites now in my suitcase to bring them home to germany so <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the reasons why i was there but uh, on the other hand no we have we were in contact uh, i think one year to one and a half years ago and i exchanged uh, the one or other kite also with kath and she had two of mine um two early ones and uh, she sent me one of her early ones back it is number 17 if i'm right yeah so well, you've got i'm happy got, to have that that's right <laughs> same yeah. here i only have one so i think uh okay. i i'm probably thank you so much frank uh yeah welcome this is this has uh, been very informative to to see a new technique i may very well try it out on on when I get to making a high wind quad, which is going yeah. to be a while, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, thank you very much. It's been very, I've enjoyed it and I, I was going to leave. I don't, I mean, I think there are still plenty of other people here, but I'm gonna head yeah. out. So thank you so much for your time. Okay, Steve, um, yeah. before you leave, have oh. a look on what is possible. Yeah, I've seen those. <laughs> <laughs> this is also possible. These are experiments. Yeah, these, these are, are you. These are you. That's crazy, Frank. Did you make those? Yeah, I made this with yeah. with permission of Elliot. I said, yeah, because um, you have the compass rose on there. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was this was our uh, our private agreement that he said yes, you are allowed to do that. Um, for for a series, so I now have a series of eleven kites, starting oh, stack. with the yeah, stack, four, stack, starting yeah. with a forty percent, and to have these ones and these are in the calculation of Elliot. These are one thousand uh, percent <laughs> kites, so they are very similar to what what is behind here. So um, now and, now you um, need to make so you have eleven in various yeah. percentages is a stack in, right now yeah. now you must make a progressive stack so you need 33. no you don't <laughs> that's crazy, that's 33 crazy. a progressive of rev 2 rev 1 5 rev 1. <laughs> <laughs> all all the meshes <laughs> Uh, for, for me, it's enough to have 11 of them in a row. And the plan for, for this summer is uh, to bring them together as a stack. And let's see how it works and that how it looks good. like. Yeah, yeah, that'll be very nice.
Yeah, Steve, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. Thank you <laughs> for, for your time. All right. I think uh, I'm going to hop on the next one to find out how to tangle my lines, but thank you. Yeah, okay. And, and I, I have to make here a little bit clarify the, the area here. All the technique has to be back and so on. Yeah, so, all okay. right. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. Bye. So other questions, there are the one or other person inside this call, they are all muted, as I see. Because uh, I have to be the one with the, the last one or whatever. <laughs> Let's see what's stated here in the chat. <laughs> 